What's up guys? Back for part two of my Let's Talk Two Sun Knives mini-series. In this part, I said I had five to show, but I got a, a lot more Two Suns in, so I'm going to be doing six in this video, and then I'll be doing a part three with another six. But as promised, this video is going to have a bunch of good Two Suns in it. So let's get started. And uh, real quick, if uh, you're interested, these were the first six I did in part one. Go check that out. And these were the budget ones. And then this one is going to have more uh, heavy hitters from Tucson. But the first one up is the uh, TS-264 here by Mazwan Mokhtar. Let's get that zoom in here. Beautiful carbon fiber. Come on, phone. There we go. Sorry guys. Yeah, just gorgeous carbon fiber the way it was done. The milling on the titanium. It's very well done. That clamshell design. Like a pseudo-integral style. Just a really nice strong detent on this one. But the thing I like is that they went in and uh, they put a little detent ramp on the hole. And I've seen them do that on several of uh, kind of the premium Tucson models. And I like when I see that on knives because um, that makes the detent nice and snappy. But you're not having to like have a real strong detent where it's going to hurt the finger. But yet it still, you know, stays in there very well. It feels almost assisted just because of how snappy it is. And then just super guillotine-y. Right out of the box, this thing was just phenomenal. Phenomenal. The action was beautiful. Perfectly centered. And you can just see the uh, division line between each backspacer. And how nice that lines up. Internal relief cut, which I always love to see. And then again, the carbon fiber on this side for that clean symmetrical look. Just an absolutely gorgeous knife. I'm, I'm really, really liking this one. It was a, a bit smaller than I anticipated, but uh, it ends up working perfectly my, for my hand size. I mean, even without that four finger choil, which I kind of thought I was going to end up having to use to like really get a comfortable grip on this knife. Um, but now the uh, normal grip is just excellent. And then using that four finger choil to choke up, is, it's just really, really nice ergonomically. I keep saying that about Mazwan's designs. His ergos are just beautifully done. He's got them down to a science now. And yeah, just a phenomenal action. Really, really liking these thumb stud um, knives as of lately and ones with holes and front flippers. That's just everything that I've been into lately. But really nice thumb stud on here, as you can see. And then it's got the uh, Torx if you want to end up changing these out, which is nice touch, I guess. Um, but yeah, really nice milling overall. Just a sweet, sweet design. And then that kind of like overlaid um, subframe lock style. Really like the stonewash finish that they did. M390 on this one. And then I do want to point out two things on this blade that are kind of, uh, I guess, strange to somebody who's not used to it. Well, one thing is strange and the other thing is just, if you're not used to it, going to be strange. And that is first, that little chip is not a chip. That's actually a sharpening choil. Mazwan wanted that to be a lot larger, but Tucson ended up making it small. So, yeah, it's supposed to be there to help, you know, give you some sharpening choil, but also using that forward finger choil so that you don't get any, um, any bite from the blade. So you can use it comfortably without worrying about hurting your finger. So that's the second reason why it's there. But it is a sharpening choil, it's just a lot smaller than he had wanted it. And then the other thing that I thought was weird was this plunge line here. You can see it on the blade. It's just, it looks odd. But other than that, just a really, really solid knife. And uh, let's get on to the next one. Oh, but actually real quick, detent angle, super early. And then this one does have the uh, detent ramp, I believe. Yeah, it does. 
So that is the TS-264. And next I have the TS-321. This is a night morning design budget knife, but this is a super, super sweet budget knife. The overall, overall design and the uh, machine is just fantastic. And all of these knives I got from uh, White Mountain Knives, forgot to mention that. Price paid on this one, 130 Price paid on this one, 40 And, uh, yeah, for 40 bucks, just phenomenal. The G10 is beautiful, the, like, sculpting and everything. Very nice, like the pivot collar. Got some scratches on this 14C, as you can see. I've been using it. The two-tone with the black wash. Really cool clip point for finger choil. Just, again, really, really nice ergos. And then... For uh, night morning, that fin four finger choil is pretty large, so that's quite different for uh, him. He usually does small ones, so that's nice to see. Again, another thumb stud um, knife. Really liking these ones, and the action on this one is not going to be the smoothest because it's on that black wash. But I was able to get it pretty smooth. It does have double row ceramic bearings, uh, but even then. Just because a knife has bearings doesn't guarantee that it's going to be, you know, drop shutty. Uh, for this knife, that's more for lateral support, so you're not getting blade play. And, uh, yeah. Solid there. But that's kind of what these double row bearings are for more in this case. I do wish the action was a little bit smoother but uh, on the black wash that's kind of expected nice jimping it's got a good crippiness and then again the ergos and that beautiful clip point blade uh, it is a finger magnet though fingerprint magnet I should say that 14c detent angle on this one is uh, a little on the later end you pass it but since you don't have the uh, flipper tab or anything there, you know, you're always going to get past it and go the rest of the way. But, let's see, got your uh, ramp there. And then, I really like how they did this backspacer. How it's integrated into uh, both handles and then it's got the um, just closed design. It's really, really cool. It is a little bit sharp on these ends right here. I wish they kind of rounded that. But overall, just a really, really solid budget knife. Uh, definitely would recommend picking this one up. Nice, solid detent, too. That's the uh, 321. And next is kind of a mid-tier right here with the uh, TS-43. Also a night morning. This is a really cool design that uh is early on as you can tell for the uh, night morning branding here on the blade it's got his older design style d2 as well and i paid uh 61 for this one yeah i believe this one's got a really strong detent uh, but yeah really solid still and then nice drop shot action works really really great there but overall, you got this like smooth uh, titanium kind of sandblast finish. Come on, let's get in here, guys. There we go. Sorry about that. A little bit of micro milling on the on the uh, kind of chamfers here, I believe. Oh no, no, no. Actually, it's very, very subtle. You can't really pick it up. But, um, it's a really cool design here. Love that Tonto blade. Very aggressive. Come on. Sorry, guys. And then the jimping on here, not really a fan of it too much. It's really chunky, so you don't really get the best bite in it. But 
the Ergos being that they got that kind of neutral style to it anyways, and then thin profile, you just get a really good grip on it anyways. So, overall, even if the jimping is not the best, it's still really nice in the hand, works out really good. And then, the way they did this um, area here with the sharpening choil, they gave you a lot of room, so it, it kind of almost works as a forward finger choil. You do get a lot of room here, so you can choke up if you want. Um, but it does kind of feel a little bit awkward. I mean, it's not necessarily rounded to be one, but still usable as one. Very, very cool Tonto blade shape. Really, really a sucker for Tontos. The uh, detent angle on the later side again, you pass it, but you will get past it once the flipper tab hits your finger all the way down. This one's got that open uh, top construction with the internal stop pin which gives it an added kind of cool look, design look to it but it does allow the grit and grime to get into the bearings area even though they're captive uh, a little bit easier. So that is the only kind of downside to that design. But that's the TS-43 here by Night Morning and that's a pretty cool one. Next is another night morning design, but from here on out, these are all going to be heavy hitters from Tucson, and that is the TS-149, or 129, sorry about that. Wow, that was a weak flip, sorry. That was terrible. But yeah, great action on this one. The uh, TS-129 here. This is one I've been hunting for a while. I mean, as you can see, this is one of their most, like, sought-after popular designs. And, uh, yeah, definitely took a while to acquire one. You can see that beautiful, beautiful carbon fiber, that chatoyance to it. It's shiny. Nice blade shape. Really, really cool blade shape. And the micro milling on this side, the milling is just gorgeous. Hidden screw construction on the pocket clip. No uh, internal liner or anything, just the thick carbon fiber, but really solid. Solid lockup. No play. And then. Nice drop shot action. Uh, I really like the way they did this hole here because it kind of gives you the best of both worlds when it comes to this style. Some people like, you know, just the hard sharpness of a, a cutout without any chamfering. And then some people like the chamfering. So this is more like a combination of both where that chamfering has a dip to it. So it's still a bit sharp, but it's not. So the meat of your finger can get in there nicely, and uh, yeah, you just actuate it easily. Works really good, and then that design style, the way uh, Night Morning did it, it just works perfectly for your finger to, you know, like I said, lock the meat right under and flick it out. And again, I keep failing it. I'm too close to the camera, guys, sorry. It's a little awkward I'm trying to do this here. Yeah, just a really, really cool design overall. Front flipper, thumb hole, just the combination I've been going for a lot lately. Really like, perfectly centered. And then that flipper, front flipper works very easily. The jimping is very nice. You have to get in front of this. And I like this kind of style of front flipper where you have to get in front of it because I feel like it just makes it really easy to, to flip. Like it forces you to flip it properly every time, I guess I would say. And then the detent on here is just really solid, so flips out very easily. Drop shot. Just a beautiful design. And then the way they did that plunge line, sharpening choil, get some nice life out of that blade. Um, you can choke up right here, so that's great. The ergonomics are 
pretty good. They're not great, but they are really good. And then you can choke up some. And the reason I say they're not great is because I prefer more of a, like this style, where it comes inward instead of outward, because of the way that kind of causes your fingers to be. And then it is a bit sharp down here, with the carbon fiber and uh, the titanium area. But it's not too bad in hand, like in use. So I'm just being a little nitpicky. But um, yeah, the uh, detent angle on this one is, I would say normal. And then of course not having a flipper tab, you don't gotta worry. But you do gotta worry about the guillotining. You can catch it like right, I think here in a spot and it'll be past it or down here and then go the rest of the way but that's the uh ts129 by night morning and next is the ts305 by mazwan mokhtar and i finally picked this one up after having had a uh, the little brother here the 136 for a while and I'm gonna do a comparison video of these two um, I really want to talk about these two because I had my nitpicks for this one and I was like wondering how Moth one would transition his fixes into the 305 but it's kind of odd because like he went backwards in a sense where he fixed his problems but the problems he created he doesn't have in this one so I don't know, it's a little strange. I gotta do the uh, comparison, but still a really, really cool knife, and I'm really loving both of these ones. This is quite large, as you can see. Beautiful carbon fiber, again on this one, just like uh, the TS-129. Really, really cool blade shape. I don't even know what to call this. This is like a, uh, kind of like a clipped harpoon style. I I don't know, Mazwan does some interesting blade shapes. M390. But this thing is so slicey. Behind the edge is just, oh my god, it's nice. Very thin. And then, uh, yeah, just really like this overall design style. That, again, clamshell, pseudo-integral, backspacer. Miles one has been doing a lot of these full backspacer designs. I like how he did the lanyard hole down here, just out of the way. Nice action on this one. Good reverse flick. This hole, uh, it's got some problems to it, and I'll talk about it right now in a second. Thumb flick works beautifully. It's more of a thumb flicker, this hole style. One thing about reverse flicking this is you got to get under the nail. You can't really stick your full finger in. If you do, this is what will happen. You're, you're going to slide up and get caught. And so you got to get under it to kind of like be able to get out of there quickly. So yeah, you'll get stuck if you try to do it that way. And I'm doing it slowly to like show you what will happen. But if I were to like really try it, I mean, I could get out of there quickly. It's just a little more difficult. You really want to get under it like this, under the nail, and it makes it a lot easier. Front flipper, love the way he uh, did that, designed it, rounded it, and jimped it. Just beautifully done. The only thing I wish is he would have had more jimping all the way up to the top in the thumb ramp area. It just would have made more sense, you know, and it would have been nice and comfortable and given you a good grip. Especially since these ergonomics are more neutral. They're comfortable, but they're more of a neutral style instead of being like, you know, ergonomically uh, perfect as in kind of, I would say, this one is. This is just more of a neutral handle style. The uh, detent angle on this one, immediate, which Mazwan does on a lot of his knives. Um, nice and smooth. Perfectly centered. External relief cut, which I don't understand why he did that. He should have just kept it with the internal relief cut, but it doesn't matter. Just still a been cleaner look. 
pocket clip uh, works okay, but it does kind of like tear the pocket a little in and out. But it does get past it and got good clearance, so it does work. It's just not uh, the absolute best clip. But yeah, this is a big boy. The uh, TS-305, and I believe it's called the Manta Ray. I just can't say for sure. But being that the other one is a Stingray, that would make a lot of sense. But yeah, check out that carbon fiber. Smooth. So, next one, guys. Last one. Let's see, let's make some room. The last one, oh my god, I've been waiting for this one for a while. I just wanted to make sure I got it at a good price, and I finally was able to get it at a good price. And speaking of price, that's something I forgot to mention on a lot of these. Um, 120, 107. Last one, 175. And that was a fail, Jesus. Sorry, guys. But, I mean, look at that. Yeah, nice uh, detent, since it's got that like plunge lock style detent. Uh, but yeah, this is the uh, TS-313. This is a um, night morning design, and I've been wanting this knife since it came out. First button lock by Tucson, and this thing is so sweet. Look at that blade, that Bowie style Tonto clip point hollow grind that thing is just so sick nice big all um thumb studs they are a little sharp so i would recommend kind of standing it down a bit on the uh edges especially if your detent the uh plunge lock is super strong which it might be for like the first day or two this knife kind of chewed up my finger uh, getting it to flick out I know some people have complained that this can be pretty hard to flick out, so it will kind of feel that way for the day, and then it eases in. Um, but yeah, you do want to be careful if you do take this one apart and uh, not mess with it. It is a, it looks like it's perfectly centered, but it's kind of got a bit of an off-centeredness. I think it's just the backspacer, the way it's sitting, but still uh, seats really nicely. Love the milling that they did on the the inside here and micro milling bead blasted that groove that kind of like ro bullet style casing pivot. I know some people, some people don't like it. I don't like all the writing on it, but I do like the way it looks, the overall style. Nice and thin hollow grind. M390 steel. Come on, focus. Night morning on the uh, handle here. Great pocket clip. This pocket clip works perfectly. That ramp is just so long. It slides in and out of the pocket just beautifully. But overall, just a very well-made knife. That groove here for the... Uh, backspacer awesome awesome button lock ergonomics are fantastic feel good and you can choke up and then this is really small kind of forward finger choil again that um, night morning does but you can use it good jimping even though it's a more of a chunkier style it's got a nice bite to it but just a really really cool button lock on double row ceramic bearings Super smooth. You do have to hold the button for it to fall, like, all the way. If you were to let it go, it will get, it'll stay wherever it uh, is held off at, I guess. But that's uh, the six that I got here. Part one and two, guys, and I'll be filming part three soon enough. Have that out for you. Got six more to show, so definitely stick around. Hope you enjoyed, so please like and subscribe. And I'll be posting more shor shorts as well. I got a bunch of new knives coming in, so definitely stick around and subscribe. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll catch you later.